In the last video, we looked at naming cations and anions, that's positive and negative ions. In this video, we're going to look at putting the names of the ions together in order to name some simple ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are made from cations and anions bonded together. The opposite charges attract and the ions are held together. Usually, though not always, the positive ion is a metal and the negative one is a non-metal. So you can recognize many ionic compounds from the fact that they're made from a metal and a non-metal. To name these compounds, the positive ion is always named first and then the negative ion. Let's look at table salt. Uh, this is sodium chloride. It's made of the elements sodium and chlorine. Uh, we name the positive ion first, in this case it's sodium. Uh, and then we would name the negative ion next. We would look, we would see that the element is chlorine, but we know that for a negative monatomic ion, the end of the name is changed to ide. So instead of chlorine, we have chloride. If we write the formula, we put down the symbols of the two elements. In the formula of a compound like this, we don't specify the charges of the ions. You'll see in a little while that the charges are sort of implicit in the formula. The important thing about the formula is that uh, it must have no overall charge. That is, the amount of positive charge must exactly equal the amount of negative charge. We can check this is the case for sodium chloride. The sodium ion has a plus one charge and the chloride ion has a minus one charge. So if we have one of each of them, then the positive of the sodium cancels out the negative of the chloride and it's neutral. And that means that our formula NaCl is correct. It shows that there is one of each ion. In naming ionic compounds, you need to get comfortable with two things. You need to be able to write the name of the compound by looking at its formula, and you need to be able to write the formula of the compound from its name. Let's do writing the name from the formula first. It's relatively easy. All you need to be able to do is recognize the ions in the formula and know their names. So let's run through some examples. Our first one here, you can see that it's made from sodium and fluorine. We know that the positive metal ion comes first and that it has the same name as the original element. The negative non-metal ion comes next and we replace the end of the name with ide. So instead of fluorine, we have fluoride. So the name of this compound, NaF, is sodium fluoride. Next one we have here is made from the elements lithium and sulfur. The sulfur is the negative ion, that's going to become uh, sulfide. So the name of the compound will be lithium sulfide. This one here, Fe is iron. It's one of those elements that doesn't have an obvious symbol. So it's made from iron and oxygen. The iron keeps its name. The oxygen is the anion, so it becomes oxide. And the name of that compound is iron oxide. Uh, this next one, Sr is strontium. Burns with a beautiful red color, strontium. And it's also made from iodine. The iodine is the negative element, the negative ion, so it will become iodide. The full name of the ionic compound is strontium iodide. Okay, those four were all ionic compounds that used monatomic ions. In the case of three of them, you can see that some of the ions occur more than once. So in lithium sulfide, for instance, you've got two lithium ions to every one sulfide ion. And in iron oxide, you've got two iron ions to every three oxygen ions. Uh, we will get into how you work that out in just a little while. These next ones, however, they're made from metal cations, but polyatomic anions. And really all you uh, need to be able to do here is recognize the polyatomic anions. So in this first case, we've got magnesium is the metal ion, so it retains its name. And you should be able to recognize now that SO4 is the sulfate anion. So we just write sulfate. So the name of this compound is magnesium sulfate. This next one here, PB is lead. And the OH here is the hydroxide anion. The fact that it's been put in brackets with a little two means that you have two hydroxides. So two separate hydroxide anions for every one lead cation. This one here is a little bit trickier. You need to look quite closely. But again, if you're familiar with your polyatomic ions, you'll notice that the cation here is ammonium. It's one of the few cations that's not metal based. And the anion here is nitrate. So that's ammonium nitrate, uh, one of the most common fertilizers and explosives bases in the world. Uh, this last one here, we've got two aluminium ions. And the polyatomic ion that 
uh, is the anion is carbonate, CO3. And you can see it's in brackets with a little three. That means there are three carbonate anions for every two aluminiums. OK, the next thing you need to be able to do is to write the formula from the name. This is slightly trickier, but it, uh, as long as you learn the rules and practice a bit, you won't find it too difficult. The steps are these. First, you need to identify the ions that are involved. Uh, then you need to write out the ion formulae, including the charges on the ions. So let's start with an example. We'll start with magnesium bromide. Again, you might find it handy to have a periodic table on hand so that you can work out the charges on your ions. So the two ions that are involved here are magnesium and bromide. So first we work out the magnesium ion. We'll have the symbol Mg. You'll find it's in group number two and it's a metal, so it will be two plus. Bromide, that comes from bromine, has the symbol Br. You'll find it's in group number seven, which means it gains one electron and becomes Br minus. OK, so that's step number two. Step number three is we need to work out how many of each ion is needed for us to have a neutral compound. Remember, overall, that the ionic compound must have a charge of zero. Working out how many of each ion is needed can be done by trial and error. The idea is to find a common multiple. You're looking to multiply the positive and negative charges by a factor so that the total positive and the total negative charges are the same. So for instance, here we will go, we have a total positive charge of two plus, and we have a total negative charge of one minus. Clearly we need more negatives. So we're gonna multiply the bromides by two. We need two of those, which means that our final formula must be one magnesium for two bromides. However, there is a neat shortcut that I'm going to show you. Uh, for simple ones like this, you can probably do it just by inspection, but the crossover method does get useful uh, for slightly larger charges. So it works like this. You write out your two ions, and you take the charge that's on the metal, and you transfer that number down to, as the subscript for the anion, and you take the charge of the anion, and you make that the subscript of the cation. So what that means is that for us, the magnesium, the charge on the bromide was one minus, so we just have one magnesium. And if there's just one of them, you don't bother writing a one. And for the bromide, the magnesium had a charge of two plus, so we take the two down to the bromide. And that means we need two bromides. So you can see it gives us the same answer. This crossover method is good as a shortcut, but it doesn't really explain to you why it works. Um, keep in mind that what you're trying to do is balance up the charges so that the total negative is equal to the total positive. Let's try another example. Let's try and write the formula for calcium nitrate. First we work out the ion formulae. Calcium is the element calcium. It's in group 2, so it's going to have a charge of 2 plus. Nitrate is what, now don't get this confused with nitride, which is the nitrogen monatomic ion. Nitrate, with the A-T-E, that indicates that it's one of your polyatomic ions. You should remember that its formula is NO3 with a charge of 1 minus. OK, if we do the crossover method for this, the 2 is going to come down near the nitrate. The 1 is going to come down near the calcium, which is going to give us a formula of 1 calcium and 2 nitrates. Now, we can't just write NO3-2 like this. This makes no sense at all. What we need to indicate is that we need two whole nitrate ions, and the way we do that is to put them in brackets and to put a little two outside, which means two lots of everything that's inside the bracket. So that's our formula for calcium nitrate. Checking that it works by our sort of total charges method, we've got one calcium, that's a total positive charge of plus two. We've got two nitrates, each of those is minus one, so two times minus one equals minus two. And so we've got plus two and minus two, and it cancels out nicely. One final example, aluminium oxide. So aluminium is one of our ions. It's in group three, so it has a charge of plus three. Uh, and oxygen is in group six. That means it has to gain two electrons to get a full outer shell, which means that the oxide ion has a charge of minus two. If we do the crossover method, we simply take the three down to the oxygen and the two down to the aluminium, and that gives us a formula of Al2O3. To check that that works in terms of charges, 
we've got uh, two aluminiums and each of them is 3 plus which equals a total positive charge of plus 6 and we have three oxygens and each of those is minus 2 3 times minus 2 is minus 6 so plus 6 and minus 6 cancel out and we have our neutral compound okay here's a task for you fill in the names and the formulae of these compounds <laughs>